Hello and welcome to my talk about deep reinforcement learning for wireless resource allocation using buffer state information. So today we have an increasing number of user equipments with heterogeneous quality of service. So they have different traffic requirements like conversational video, conversational voice, discrete automation or web browsing within a cell of a cellular network. Um, in the recent years, so for LTE for example, OFDMA has shown to be the technique of choice for multiple access schemes. So the question now for OFDMA is how to all allocate the OFDMA subcarriers to the, to the user equipment to get first of all a maximum system throughput while meeting the transmit power constraints while meeting user equipment specific traffic requirements and being as fair as possible among all user, uh, user equipments. Uh, we already know the classical resource allocation problem with the static quality of service and traffic requirements that aren't time varying and this uh, classical resource allocation problem can be formulated as a convex optimization problem. It can be solved using um, approaches like water filling, max min fairness or proportional fairness. However, if we introduce variable quality of service requirements and time varying traffic requirements, the optimization problem gets non-convex. And we can model the non-convex resource allocation problem as a Markov decision process and use deep reinforcement learning to solve it. So Markov decision process always has some specific states. Um, here the states are defined by an environment, so we have n physical resource blocks to be to allocate. We have k user equipment where we need to allocate the resource blocks to and the user equipments belong to one of four quality of service classes. Furthermore, the user equipments they roam around in the cell of the cellular network and um, depending where they are they have a good or bad channel which is indicated by the channel quality indicator. Furthermore, the base station has a buffer and for every user equipment there are up to L or there are L buffer slots where the packets to transmit for a certain user equipment can be stored. We know the size and the age of a packet that it's in the buffer. So the age means from when it should be transmitted the first time to uh, so it's just a waiting time until the packet is transmitted or since, since when it waits for his transmission. So at the moment state-of-the-art deep reinforcement learning agents are limited in their environment information or they have a limited number of user equipment. So our task was to design, to design a Q-learning agent that can handle a larger state space. That means we have more user equipment and full buffer state information. So just a short introduction into deep reinforcement learning. The deep reinforcement learning is characterized by an environment and by an agent which acts on the environment. So an environment is described by a certain state the environment is. Then we give the state to our agent, the agent follows a policy and depending on the state it chooses an action which acts on the environment. And then if the action was good or not, so we get a reward and the reward is good or not depending if the action was good or not. And of course when we do an action environment or when our action agent does an action environment, the environment just moves on to the next state st plus one. The goal in reinforcement learning now is to find the optimal policy and optimal policy maximizes the expectation over the instantaneous reward plus future rewards. So we have um, a discount factor gamma to the power of t over here um, which makes sure that in the instantaneous reward, so the next reward is weighted with, with a 1 and then we just sum up the future rewards up to capital T and they are just weighted with a, with a number smaller than 1 if gamma is chosen to be smaller than 1 so just make sure that the next um, reward is the most important but we still take a look in the future by adding the future rewards. We now use Q-learning to drain the deep Q network and um, for resource allocation we have an action space of size of the user equipment because we have always or we, in every allocation step we have one physical resource block and we need to allocate this one to one of the k users so the decision is to which user this resource block is allocated. 
So to kickstart learning, in the beginning, and motivated by Schmidt 19, we said that we introduced uh, Mickey, so mim mimicking learning, which means the reward of our agent is a sum of the reward of the environment. So if the traffic requirements for every user equipment is met, plus the Mickey reward. For the Mickey reward, we have an expert ag agent running parallel to our agent. And if both agents choose the same action, then our agent gets an additional reward. And the reward our agent gets just decreases with um, training time. So the sense behind is that in the beginning our agent um, just needs, so doesn't know a lot about environment, so we just use the expert agent's knowledge and say, okay, when the expert agent behaves like that, we should behave like that too. And then we just detach our agent from the expert agent so our agent can, with um, increasing training time, can explore the state space on his own. Furthermore, we introduced age capping to, de to decrease the training time by compressing the state space. So the thing is, evaluation time is usually longer than the training time because the resource allocation is not limited. It sh in a base station should run for days or something. So it can happen that some packets aren't transmitted and then the packet age just sums up and sums up and so it gets really old the package. The thing is you can't see that in training because training time is, lim time is limited. So we just compress the state space over here when we say that a package that exceeds the uh, the packet, if we have a package that's age exceeds the packet delay budget, so the maximum delay a packet is allowed to have to be transmitted, then we just say we just clip to the packet delay budget because then it's already too late, and then we need to send the packet as soon as possible and it's really urgent. But um, we just say. It's important to know how old a package is up to a certain limit and the limit is the packet delay budget and then we just clip and so in evaluation we make sure that the oldest packets are as old as the packet delay budget. We introduce furthermore encoder neural networks so we have the information for every user equipment uh, with the size and the age of every package of every packet and furthermore the channel quality indicator and we just compress this multi-dimensional vector to in this way a uh, three three valued vector and we just make sure that all user equipments that belong to um, that belong to one quality of service class they just share parameters of an ENN. So that means if we have four QoS classes we just drain four ENNs and then if we have multiple user equipments that belong to one QoS class they just get all the same ENN so everybody gets its own but with the same parameters. Okay. Furthermore, more we observed that um, during training, the agent allocates all physical resource block blocks to the same user equipment. So, let's say at the DQ network, the um, first user equipment is always at the same input nodes, and then it gets mm, its uh, information always flow through the net, and it gets all the physical resource blocks. To remedy this problem, we just said that we want to uh, shuffle the order of the user equipments by using a permutation matrix P run after every after every training step to so just make sure that the user equipments always are on different positions at the input of the DQ network. After the DQ network, we just take the inverted matrix P run and then we can restore the order of the user equipments. We furthermore observed that due to the limited training time, we sometimes don't have packets at the rearmost buffer slots. So the agent, if there's package and evaluation, the agent hasn't seen any packet in the training at the slot and then in evaluation he doesn't know how to behave. So what we want to introduce is a packet shuffling, one, one time a random packet shuffling that we just, if we have the packets and they come to the first or second or third buffer slot, we just put them anywhere in the buffer or somewhere in the buffer, somewhere is the correct word, somewhere in the buffer, and um, if we use the sorted packet shuffling, we just take the um, packets, we preserve the order and we just, do a shuff, uh, we just do a shifting of all packets so that to the back of the buffer, for example. So now you can see the final structure of the agent's network. So first of all, we have the input vectors containing all the state, info, state space information of a certain user 
1 to k. Then we have the um, compression by the encoder neural network, we have the permutation by the um, permutation matrix, then we have the DQ network, uh, which estimates the Q values, so the expected reward for a certain action. Then we need to restore the order, and then we have the Q values for certain actions in the correct order, so we can say which uh, user equipment to pick. Furthermore, we need to know which physical resource block to allocate. It is given as integer, we just do a one hot vector encoding and then we do an embedding to compress the information again and have a better representation of this information. For evaluation, we now just um, created four different agents using our techniques. So first of all, the encoder neural network agent, ENN, then the no packet shuffling agent, NPS, the random packet packet shuffling agent RPS and the sorted packet shuffling agent the SPS. So the ENN all agents use Mickey, the UE, um, so Mickey for kickstarting learning, the UE shuffling to avoid the bias towards a certain action and the ENNs for compression of state space information. So the NPS then in comparison to the ENN uses age capping, the age capping technique we introduced, uh, but no packet shuffling technique. And the RPS and SPS agents, they use a random or sorted packet shuffling. The environment we evaluate on has 25 physical resource blocks to allocate. We have K um, equals 32 user equipments and we have 32 buffer slots for every user. We evaluate on 300 um, realizations of the environment and uh, we have a longer evaluation time than training time. To have agents to benchmark against, we just took three, the three agents that were pre-implemented by the environment we use. That was one time the round robin if traffic, the proportional fair channel wear, and the knapsack agent. As you now can see in the upper figure, is that we beat the round robin if traffic agent. That's not that hard. But what we, what we can see too is that the, our ENN agent and the SPS agent, that they have one significant outlier each. If we zoom in, then we can see that all our four agents beat the PFCA and the Knapsack agent in terms of mean evaluation reward. So the mean evaluation reward is the green triangle and the um, orange line is the median evaluation reward. So our agents beat the existing agents and they all use the ENN technique so we believe that the ENN technique helped to compress state space information and make training faster and more feasible. Furthermore, we can observe that the ENN agent has multiple outliers compared to the RPS, SPS and NPS agent. So the difference of them was that the ENN didn't use the age capping, the others did. So we believe that due to the long evaluation time of the, so it was four times, four times as long as the training time, um, that age capping made this improvement because now during evaluation all packages occurred and if we did the age capping for the RPS, SPS and NPS we could stabilize the agent in the evaluation. Now we can take an even closer look to the RPS, SPS and NPS agent. So we see they are roughly the same so far. The RPS is slightly worse performing than the SPS, NPS, however the RPS is the only one that didn't have a significant outlier. Um, as you can see in the upper pictures, the SPS had a significant outlier and the NPS had one significant outlier too. So we believe that RPS um, has a worse, slightly worse performance due to the random packet shuffling, but uh, we trade therefore generalization because for the evaluation, then we just have some packets that occur in the rearmost buffer slots and in the two outlier environment realizations of the SPS and NPS. That's what we observed over there, that uh, packets occupied these rearmost slots. Coming to the conclusion, we can say that the ENNs can compress highly dimensional state space information, which improves the existing agents. Furthermore, age capping um, stabilize, stabilizes the performance when packets exceed the packet delay budget. We have two shuffling techniques introduced, so user equipment shuffling to avoid learning a bias towards a certain action 
and the packet shuffling, which remedies the issues caused by the sparsely occupied buffers. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to ask now.